in the area. Um, now, I don't know if everybody's got tire levers or not. You know, they just make it a lot easier for getting the tire off. Some of them you can get off with your hands, some not so easily. Different brands. Lots of, okay, so what you want to do is you want to, to get the tire off the easiest, start away from the valve stem. Go directly opposite because you've got the most amount of play on the tire there. Just kind of insert that under the, the one side. You don't hook both sides of the tire. It's the, the otherwise you're going to be fighting with yourself. And then just kind of pull. And the one half of that tire comes right off. And then you just yank the rest of it off of there. You made that way too easy. I've done this. <laughs> I've been doing this for... I've spent 30 minutes on the side of the road. Those things, it's, it's the a little hooks that hook onto the... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you start away, if you let all the air pressure out of that tube, even if you, you know, okay, say you got a, a low, you know, a, a slow leak, and you can feel it, you know, you start to bounce, and you're like, oh, you know, I've got it flat. Pull over, let all the air pressure out of that tube, um, and that way, it, you have the most amount of flex, you know, in the tire, and start away from the valve stem. Like I said, you got most of, you know, you got a lot of free room there. Um, when you install tires, I generally install them with the valve stem and the logo facing each other. That way I can go through here and if I find where the hole is in the tube, I can go immediately on the tire where that was. And that way you can find, you know, you pick out the thorn, you can pick out the piece of glass, you can, you know, and if you got a pinch flat, it'll look like snake bites. You'll have two holes in there, two little small holes. And then you'll know you just forgot to air up the tires. And you, or you, you hit a pothole, anything like that. So. After you've pulled the tire off, run your hands through the tire, unless you can, you know, obviously see the nail or see the glass, anything like that. Run it through, make sure there's nothing sticking, then you would have a new tube. What's nice about these Presto outs too, is that you can actually give it a little bit of air pressure, and you can close that off. So when you go to install the new tube, give it a little bit of pressure so it holds its shape a little bit better. And then, your wheel. Can you talk about the tape that's on that rim? Yeah, the rim tape. All of the bikes are going to have rim tape on the inside. Um, what this does is it protects the, uh, the spokes and the spoke nipples from coming through the other side, and it prevents the tube from falling down into the spoke hole. Saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of flats. Um, so you want to make sure, oh, go ahead. So if that tape comes up with the tube, you got to make sure you're laying that. You got to make sure you're going to lay it back down and then you probably want to get new tape at that point in time. You know, if it's, if it's that old that it's losing, it's lost its adhesive, you know, go ahead and, you know, their tape is, you can get anything from a rubber tape, you know, at the shop for mm -hmm. a dollar, you know, up to the stuff I've got here is like three bucks. You know, it's, it's really not expensive. And if you're getting a lot of flats that you can't figure out why, look at the tape, and if there's a lot of indentations, you know, and especially if the hole on the tube is on the inside, you know, it's probably caused by your rim tape more than anything else. It's an inexpensive fix, you know, and it's gonna save you a lot of headaches in the future. So, and this stuff, go ahead. You say caused by the rim? Caused by the rim tape. A lot because when the rim tape, or la well, lack thereof, or being old, and a lot of times, like this stuff I've gotten here, when it gets old, you know, it'll start to kind of flake off, and it might have some sharp edges on, it. and therefore, you know, and even even if it's old and it moves a little bit, you know, your tire moves and your tube moves whenever you're riding it. It's not a you know, it's not something that just stays still. So you've got those, you know, you've got the two surfaces rubbing on each other, and if one of them's you know rough, it's like sandpaper. It's just going to wear through that thing. Um, and cause, you know, then you're going to be sitting there like, you know, and then you're not going to know where the flat's coming from and you're going to be confused. If you run out of tubes, you know, say you're on a ride, you get two flats. Bad day. Make patch kits as well. Park makes a glueless patch kit where it's just like a sticker. You peel it on, you slap it on the hole, you're good to go. You know, it's fixed. You get, let it dry a little bit. 
and air back up. This one has got it's got vulcanizing glue in there, is what it's called. And you got a bunch of different patches of different sizes. Basically, find where the hole is. And this also has sandpaper in it. A little piece of little piece of emery cloth sandpaper. You want to rough up where the area is where the you know where you found the puncture. That'll allow the glue to apply. You apply the glue, stick the patch on there, let it dry for a little bit, and then once again air it up. Best solution though, just put a new tube in it if you've got it. Because the patch, patches are temporary. You know, they're not something that's meant to be for years and years and years. Uh, I know people, you know, patch tubes five, six times. And the tube is five bucks. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's not that not that big of a deal. Get everything fixed, a lot of, little bit of pressure. Once again, find your, your valve hole, label, and you put one side of the tire on. You just hook the one side, leave the other side. No. And you take your valve stem, insert that. Then, what you want to do is you kind of want to I'm doing this without sight, so pardon me. Push the tube up into the tire. The whole way around. And then, kind of push the whole thing onto the rim without hooking the other side of the tire on. This saves you from the pinching the tube while you're airing it up. And then you blow it, and it sounds like a gunshot. People in the neighborhood run, and people call the cops, and they don't know what's going on. Especially in some of the parts of Athens. That... <laughs> then, once you've got that all on, go back to your valve stem. Hook that other side of the tire on. And just kind you of start at the valve stem this time? You start at the valve stem hooking it back on. And what that, the reason that is, is because a lot of times the valve stem will hold it on there. It'll, it'll kind of hook it down and hold the, hold the bead of the rim in the tire. So that way you're not fighting and losing you know, a battle where it's pieces of it are coming up. And just kind of run it, your hands all the way through. And once again, you got that on. Now, run through it and check in between the, the tire and the rim. Make sure there's no tube sticking out. Once again, you'll air it up, it'll blow, you might even be out of tire. You know, it might blow the sidewall right out of your tire if you, you know, if you do that. Especially if you use a CO2 cartridge and you put you know, 90 pounds of pressure really quick inside that thing. And then with the CO2 cartridges, I'm not going to use it, but they make a bunch of different uh, inflators for them. Some have buttons, this one does not. Basically, you thread that CO2 on there, you hear a little pop. A lot of them will have a, a button on the back side of it to air it up. You would just pop it on there, air it up. I always air it up a little bit first to make sure that nothing's gonna blow, and then once I know that it's safe, you can finish the rest of it off. Um, and these are really nice, because you won't sit there with a mini hand pump for 20 minutes. It's 110 degrees outside. Nobody wants to sit there and crank on a pump for you know, 20 minutes outside. It's just not there are there are different sized cartridges. Is that correct? Yes, the uh, the standard is 16. Um, a six, one 16 gram cartridge will fill this tire up to about 95 psi. Um, so that's you know the 12 will get you the 12 will get you you know 85 you know, 80 psi, um, and then they make a 25 as well, and that's good enough for two tires up to 85 PSI, or one, and you just 160, and 